thinking of all these different times when I saw a new Nike shoe. You know, if it was the first time walking in, in Foot Locker and seeing like the Carmine Sixes back then and seeing like the red and white on the Jordan, it just like blew my mind. But I was trying to propose something that makes a kid feel the same way that I felt when the first time I had a pair of Jordans. You know, if you're gonna get the opportunity, that's the chase. I think basketball is at the essence of sneaker culture. You know, I think everything comes from and is birthed from and post the Air Jordan. And back then it was kind of like, all you needed was a pair of Jordans. Then you could get away with wearing like tees and sweats to school every day because you had the Jordans. We didn't have access to fashion designers and creative directors from overseas like the kids do now. It was just our, our fashion director, our creative director was, was Jordan. Um, and having that emotional connection through basketball, through Jordan, I knew that was the perfect foundation for me to, to, to come in and build from. You know, I came up here with like three or four suitcases, you know, stacked with like, you know, 90s references. And um, a lot of it was Jordan, a lot of it was Flight, a lot of it was Agassi. We started off kind of referencing a lot of these vintage shoes and it wasn't until we like scrapped it all. And, and I never sketch. And I was like, what if it looks like something like this? And then we were like, that's it. Throughout the process, there was a lot of talking at the beginning. And it was pretty clear from the beginning that he is like, lives and breathes basketball. His attention detail is insane. So um, I think he took us to another level uh, with, with the craft, um, with um, just really sweating every single thing um, on the shoes. I just remember, it's, it was kind of like formulaic in the sense, and, and I think that's a good thing, where he would come in, he would open up his bag, the first thing he would do was bring out the Bluetooth speaker and then put music on, and that's how it, it, the sessions began. I think this was probably the first thing we landed on, right? Was the yeah. logo. We pulled from the, uh, the old Flight logo. I remember being a kid and not being able to afford the Jordans, but I could afford the Air Flights. I just had a really strong emotional connection to. So we flipped that and to the Air, Fear of God. You know, I don't think, we don't let that many people like remix our logos or, but it made sense in this context, in this project. And then the placement of the logo, we kind of gave it this like, uh, 80s placement like in the center his vision of, of really specifically the logo has to go right there it'll make sense and it becomes it helps that piece become iconic creating a new warm-up yep you know what would my idea of a, a warm-up be a little looser than what you see now a little oversized kind of kept the sleeves raw which speaks back to some fear of god branding and also just old 80s athletic wear where you just, just cut your sleeves off the shorts we obsessed over <laughs> sure yeah uh this is kind of a big pair but just you know taking it back to like the shorter silhouettes of the 90s and even like you know i don't know if you remember how jordan's like his shorts kind of did this little weird angle so we made sure that we were able to land that angle also we really like um dove into this lifestyle of like a, a basketball player and that's kind of how we landed that's on some right. of the footwear stuff and it's kind of how we landed on the shoot around shoe. A lot of the NBA players were shooting around in something and then when game time came they were like switching over to a different shoe and so how do we create something for that moment? You know I think uh, players are looking to be expressive in every moment that they have whether it's the tunnel whether it's yeah. shoot around or in game like they're expressing themselves through their clothing through their fashion before any of these design lines happened we you know we land at this shape and so it's just kind of like building on top of this is how we want the shoe this is the shape of the shoe yeah. um, and we wanted to maintain the rear entry on the shoot around. Um, and we thought it was just a good place to like have this old school, iconic, just huge Nike swoosh. Clean, super clean silhouette and just the ability to wear that strap um, yeah, around the back, around way, the front. Kinda, if you want a Rashid Wallace, yeah. you know, 
This kind of like looks like the modern day Rashid Air Force One with the strap kind of going that way. Or you could kind of like wear it across the front. That just gives you kind of some of the emotion of 90s basketball. It also feels a little bit of kind of like a self-fulfilling prophecy of the Air Mag kind of <laughs> thing. This was actually the first prototype, right? And this was actually um, kind of a fun moment when we actually uh, had Jerry uh, try it on. Originally, this cage was like closed in the back and it was supposed to kind of hold your heel and but it became impossible to get in and out of the shoe. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, Leo came up with like, why don't we just split the cage in the back, you know? And so the, the cage splits right and the zipper kind of goes right through it. We wanted the beautiful, sleek, tighter um, ankle shape, but we didn't want to compromise on the entry. So that's something that we went back and forth with on opening it up bigger uh, and then just that wasn't right. Um, yeah, we had it. it was too wide. It's too felt. wide. Yeah. And I think this uh, is one of the early wide ones. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to take this like David Robinson military sneaker thing and, and take that and make it like lightweight. Yeah. Because you got the height, but the materiality here um, with this mesh just gives it that range of motion. There's some cool details on, on the inside of all these shoes, like the lining um, has this sort of microfiber. Uh, suede that's perforated for breathability but not only does it feel luxurious but also there's a function to it too like on the inside of the shoe you don't want too much movement and rotation inside the shoe um, that helps keep you uh, from a performance standpoint um, from sliding around too much so we really sweated that material and um, making sure that the whole the whole inside is actually lined with it down to the sock liner top cloth as well so all those little touches we, we literally like obsessed. How do we maintain like the conviction of the original design? Yeah. You know, it's just like, I don't want to compromise. I don't want to lose the cage. I, I love this line right here. And it speaks back to kind of this wraparound line on the Fear of God basketball sneaker, you yeah. know, and it speaks to that. And then also kind of like to a Hirachi. And we started getting some wear test reports on this on, on this shoe and it was a version where it was all suede yep. um, and it was just too hot and that's something I went back to Jerry with and was like yo uh, these players are saying they're like sweating to death in these shoes and we need to like make it more breathable what, what do you want to do yeah. and that goes back to his comment about no compromise and that's where we landed on um, picking a great mesh that was light, flexible, gave you the, the breathability and mobility that um, I think the players were looking for. We wanted to kind of keep some of the integrity of like the fear of God's soul and how you, it's like super like smooth. There's no like design lines cut into the side of the sole. And so we kind of came up with this idea of why don't we do like a flush, you know, air, air bubble, yeah. which ironically hadn't been done before. Yeah, because it's like, I think 180 was one of the references too, just yep. how amazing that bag looked, just the way it wrapped from the lateral side underneath and all around, that clear bubble. Um, but it's always been this round bubbly kind of thing. And um, for us to kind of look at it in a very modern, like taut form um, was really that look and that iconic window to a new place. I would say maybe six or seven years ago was my first trip to Portland and I was coming um, with Matt Kemp. And my hope was to hopefully, you know, build Matt into the next Ken Griffey and to hopefully get a chance to, you know, design a performance shoe. And that was a loose hope of mine. But it always kind of seemed like a dream and I always, I always thought it would have to happen through, um, maybe somebody like Matt, or maybe through another athlete. I never thought that God would give me the opportunity to work with Nike through a platform that, that I built, you know? And so as, a, as I'm sitting here today, it's, it's all very much a dream.